Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we walk through the haunted streets of a city consumed by the underworld. This is the story of Ghostwire Tokyo Explained. We open on the scene of a traffic accident. Horrified onlookers gather in the heart of Tokyo, Japan, after witnessing a young man named Akito who crashed while en route to the hospital to visit his sister Mari. One of these bystanders isn't strictly human, rather a spirit desperate to find a host to gain control over. <sighs> Can't use a life on There's no time I'm gonna vanish! This spirit is known as KK. He decides Akito is the perfect candidate to possess and grant him the body he desperately seeks. And so, while he is unable to fight, KK enters Akito's body, waking him from the crash. Just at that moment, a mist fills the city, washing through its streets like a tidal wave of death. Anyone caught in its wake immediately is consumed and vanish without a trace only their clothes and personal belongings left behind. The souls of these people are then trapped within containment cubes throughout the city for the spirits of the underworld to feast upon. These ghastly spirits were born from the pain and despair of those who once lived and have been summoned from the depths of the underworld by a mysterious man in a Hanya mask. Oh, soul. Heed my call. I will be your salvation, your soul redemption, your souls shall be purified and form the foundation of the world to come. This figure appears to be the architect behind everything and uses the imprisoned souls of fallen humans to entice his demon army. Despite the surrounding death and destruction, Akito's body and soul remain intact. KK's spirit has the power to protect him from the forces of darkness. What? <sighs> Gotta spell it out for you, I guess. As long as I'm in here, you're tougher than that. Now come on! What the? This isn't the only perk Akito gains from hosting KK's ghost. By channeling KK's ethereal spirit powers, Akito is able to use elements of wind, water and fire to fight back against the malicious underworld entities now inhabiting the city. Shooting projectiles from the palm of his hand to take down these ghosts before finishing them for good by tearing out their cores. While Akito initially fights KK to regain control of his body, the unlikely duo soon realise they must work together in order to achieve a common goal. KK wishes to take down Hanya and save the city, while Akito hopes to reach his sister at the hospital before it's too late. And so they strike a bargain and head to the hospital together. Have your way. I'll play along for now. You just remember, your life is in my hands. Make this a pain in the ass for me, and you're on your own. We're done, now move. Don't order me around! After fighting their way to the hospital's fourth floor, where Mari's room is located, Akito begins to witness strange visions. These visions are apparent to Akito as he possesses a gift known as the Affinity, which gives him a heightened connection to the spirit realm. He sees his sister walking the halls, fire engulfing them. This understandably freaks him out, especially as Mari ended up in a coma as a result of being trapped in a fire at their apartment. As Akito and KK reach Mari's room, they step through the door and into an alternate dimension. The spirit energy within this realm scrambles Akito's brain, leaving him powerless to defend himself. The man in the Hanya mask stands over Mari's bed. He states that Mari is the perfect candidate for his master plan. This is because she is able to cross over to the other side and remain intact, moving between the human and spirit realm seamlessly. Don't touch her! And who are you? 
A human. There is another. It's you. <laughs> Nessian fool. I liberated your spirit from its prison, yet still you cling to mortal flesh. That's right. Came back for you. It's now clear Hanya was responsible for KK's death, but their connection beyond that remains a mystery. Akito summons the last of his remaining strength to save his sister, but is quickly restrained by Hanya's accomplices. Three other humans wearing masks, all with their own unique spirit powers. Hanya punches through Akito's body, contaminating it with dark energy and leaving him for dead. These mysterious characters then collect up his sister and vanish into the ether. Moments later, Akito wakes up in the afterlife. There is only one way to survive. Akito must relinquish control of his body and allow KK's spirit back inside. This is the only way to save Mari. Akito agrees to this arrangement and so the two bond once more and set off on a mission to stop Hanya, save Mari, and most importantly, free Tokyo from the control of the underworld. KK, please help Mari. In order to get about the city, the two adventurers must first clear away the deadly fog hanging over it. To do this, they have to locate various shrines and tori gates and cleanse them. By doing so, the fog is lifted and the city of Tokyo returns to its past glory, albeit devoid of human life. However, while the human population have been taken, their spirits remain. Some of them converse with our heroes, requiring them to take care of unfinished business so they may pass on peacefully to the afterlife. Others are trapped in a sort of limbo or imprisoned inside containment cubes. These spirits can be absorbed into papercraft items known as katashiro. These absorb spirit energy, after which they can then be transferred to the afterlife via devices located within payphones. These spirit transmission devices were designed by a former acquaintance of KK, a mysterious man named Ed. While Ed never speaks to us in person, he updates Akito and KK via answer phone messages. I'm sorry I can't come to the phone. Many unforeseen happenings. Only Dale and I managed to escape Shibuya as originally planned. I initially thought that KK had died. But, as souls are being transmitted, he may still be alive after all. Out. Intrigued to discover more about KK and his former team of spirit trackers, Akito heads to their old base of operations, located in a downtown apartment building. KK worked with several others, a woman named Rinko, a man named Dale, and the aforementioned Ed. They studied the occult and each used their unique set of skills to track down spirit monsters known as yokai. KK had previously worked as a detective, and so this had been his role in the group. Together they had been working to track down the whereabouts of the man in the Hanya mask. He had gone rogue, and is using his knowledge of the underworld to nefarious ends. This origin story is expanded in the prequel to Ghostwire Tokyo, which takes the form of a visual novel. Here we get to know these characters a little better and learn how KK and Hanya gained their ethereal spirit powers. These powers were obtained through ether crystals, with KK forced to interact with these mysterious minerals in order to save both himself and Rinko against an invading horde of visitors. KK and Hanya went on to become sworn enemies, with KK tracking the masked man for decades, all this leading to present day events. For an in-depth look at this backstory, check out my playthrough of the Ghostwire Tokyo prelude, The Corrupted Case Files. I'll leave a link at the end of this video. Before leaving the apartment, KK bestows a gift upon his new host, a bow and arrow he owned while alive. With this, Akito is able to defend himself even when KK is not present. 
It isn't long before he needs to use his new weapon either. As they exit the hideout, a darkness engulfs the building, trapping Akito within. In order to escape, he must locate three seals and break them, this lifting the barrier and restoring the duo back to the human realm. KK informs Akito that barriers like these merge the underworld and the human world together, manipulating the physical plane around them in real time and eventually crushing them if said barrier is not removed in a timely manner. With the barrier removed, Akito and KK search for their would-be assassin, the person who cast it. KK uses his spirit's powers to track the assassin's trail, and this eventually leads them to the subway system. There he is. It's the guy we lost before. He went underground. Maybe they're operating out of there. We're not losing him again. Let's go. After fighting ghosts throughout the subway, the pair eventually reach a construction site deep beneath, where they witness a number of troubling visions, reflecting the damnation of Tokyo and its population. They also come face to face with their enemy, the first of Hanya's three henchmen, this one known as Yasutoko. He transforms into a demonic visitor known as Sojusuki, and drags both Akito and KK into the spirit realm in a bid to destroy them. After defeating the Sojusuki, Yasutoko returns to his human form, and continues to attack Akito. During this conflict, his mask is shot off by KK, revealing a terrible truth. Yasutoko is KK, or rather, he is using his body. What? Why are we fighting? Because that's me! He made this monstrosity out of my body! What? After Hanya killed KK, he used his body in a ritual, allowing it to be possessed by a demon which fed off KK's tortured soul his darkest thoughts and feelings giving the Sojusuki within him power, and allowing his human form to be controlled like a puppet by Hanya in the process. Yasutoko steals KK's spirit, and imprisons it inside a containment cube. He then vanishes, leaving a now unconscious Akito behind. Waking back up, Akito realises KK has been taken, and therefore he has lost his ethereal powers. If he has any hope of saving his sister Mari and cleansing Tokyo, Akito must find a way to reunite with his unlikely ally. So he sneaks back to the surface and decides to look for clues as to KK's whereabouts, starting back at the hideout. This time, however, he encounters an unexpected guest. What the hell? Who are you? You are in the picture. You and that grumpy old man. <laughs> sure seem to have hit it off, huh? So, you want to do some rescuing? This is Rinko, one of KK's former task force members. She is a master hacker and computer whiz, able to infiltrate any systems given the right tools. Rinko has lost her human form, like KK she was killed by Hanya, however her spirit form lives on, she still has unfinished business, and informs Akito she will help him and KK in their mission. Before she leaves, Rinko passes a wallet to Akito and instructs him to pass this on to KK. Inside is a picture of a woman and a child, KK's estranged family. Once in possession of this wallet, Akito is able to track KK's location. A mysterious black mist guides him through the city streets and over to a shrine. Within this shrine, KK is imprisoned, and upon freeing him, Akito grudgingly agrees to allow the detective spirit back into his body so their mission can continue. This your family? Is that... Are they why you're... Got nothing to do with you. All that matters is we're on the same path. Me and you. You coming or what? That how you ask someone for a favor? I'm not asking. It's an offer. Hope you don't regret it. Ah! 
Shortly after this reunion, a giant pillar of light rises from the depths of the city. It seems this is Hanya's location. However, it is shrouded in impassable fog. Under the guidance of their newfound acquaintance Rinko, the pair journey to the Sengoku Center building, the source of the fog preventing Akito and KK from continuing their quest to track down Hanya. They track Rinko's spirit trail inside this building, where they discover her trying to reveal hidden Tori gates about the city. By revealing these gates, KK will be able to cleanse them and lift the fog. The pair do battle against hordes of oncoming visitors who attempt to drain Rinko's spirit energy while she completes her task. Although they once worked together, KK isn't too trusting of Rinko and tells Akito to be careful around her. So you mind telling us why you didn't mention there'd be visitors here? Well, they had set things up so that we'd have to come deal with this machine. So obviously, they were gonna set a trap here. Come on, use your head. Why'd you think I called you here? Oh, it's on me for not using my head, right? Don't pull the shit again. Did something happen between you two, or what? Could say that. She botched our whole operation. Not too thrilled about seeing her. With the Tory gates now cleansed, the two press on, this time searching for another of KK's ex-teammates, Erica, a young girl who is friends with Rinko and the daughter of the man in the Hanya mask. Erica possesses a gift known as the Affinity, which, like Akito, allows her to connect with and see the underworld and those ghostly visitors. Erika went missing but now appears as a ghostly apparition, leading Akito and KK throughout the city. This quest leads the duo to Erika's old apartment, where a troubling discovery is made. I guess the cat's out of the bag, huh? You could say that. Good. Then I don't have to sneak around anymore. I'll just leave you in here. <sighs> Erika has been used by her father Hanya to possess the spirit of her old friend Rinko and lead Akito and KK astray. Now trapped in the spirit's realm, our hapless heroes must locate Rinko and cleanse her spirit in order to escape this prison and free her from Erika's control. We're taking Rinko back! Erika inhabiting Rinko did lead to a positive outcome, as Rinko was able to acquire the exact coordinates of Hanya's location as a result. She transmits this data to Akito and KK. With this information, our ghost hunting detectives head across town right to Hanya's location. He hides within a cave in a secluded forest. It is here that Hanya finally reveals his master plan. He is attempting to merge together the realm of the living and of the dead into one constant plane. By doing so, the masked madman believes he will be able to reunite with the souls of his lost wife and daughter. My wife and daughter understand me perfectly. I have but to beckon their souls back from beyond. Special credit must be given to my daughter. This barrier would not exist were it not for her. You sacrificed your own kid for this? The body is not but a vessel for the soul. Hanya believes the human body is simply a vessel for the soul, and so after the spirits of his family departed this world, the evil architect, in a state of true madness, used their bodies as weapons harnessing the dark and hateful feelings trapped within them to create monstrous yokai he could then control like puppets. This is why Erika appeared to use her friend Rinko for nefarious purposes, but was in fact simply a puppet under her father's control. Erika always harboured feelings of loneliness and despair, feeling like an outsider to the rest of the world, her only true companions, the stray cat she adopted from the streets of Tokyo. Therefore, her demon form, Koamote, is that of a giant cat, a yokai known as the Biotara. The Biotara tears Keike's spirit from Akito's body, once more leaving him vulnerable against her otherworldly powers. 
Akito sneaks around in a bid to outsmart the demon, all the while haunted by the sound of Erika's inner torment. It's such a strange feeling. The harder life gets to deal with, the emptier I feel. But no one understands. Just a burden, always being protected. All of shell. Akito manages to outwit Koomote by sneaking up on it and ripping out the free cores contained in each of its tails. This vanquishes the malicious spirit and returns Akito and KK to the realm of the living. Here KK finishes what Akito started, removing Koomote from Erika's possessed body and allowing her to finally rest in peace. Unfortunately, things escalated tenfold while the heroic duo were indisposed. Hanya summons giants from the underworld, which now all head towards Tokyo Tower, their massive spirit energy required to help open the portal, which will merge the realm of the living and dead together. However, Akito and KK are unable to reach the tower, as it is shrouded in a deadly fog. A call from Rinko later and a plan is formulated. We can still turn this around. It's not over yet. We're a team now, the three of us. In a parking lot downtown, Rinko has stashed her old bike, and it comes equipped with a few modifications. Namely, the ability to shield those riding it against the forces of darkness. Upon locating the bike, Akito discovers it is not in working order, and KK informs him of a few key items required to get it back on the road. The first item on their paranormal shopping list is simple, gasoline and a turbine wheel. Fairly everyday car components. Of course, there is a catch. Vehicles containing these desired items are being monitored by Hanya's underworld army, and upon retrieving them, KK is torn from his host and dragged into the spirit realm. Akito follows and finds KK trapped in a clearing. Steadying his trusty bow, Akito gets in a spot of target practice as he valiantly protects a defenseless KK from hordes of oncoming visitors. That was impressive. You handled yourself well. Thanks. Never realized just how safe it feels in here. With KK safe and both parties return to the human realm, they finally track down a car with the desired components and check them off the list. The final key item is Fragrant Underworld Oil, which, as the name suggests, is exclusively located in the Underworld. This requires Akito to locate a shrine with a portal to the Underworld, which they do, and after yet more ghostly encounters, at long last lay hands on the oil and make a hasty retreat back through the portal. With all required components now in hand, Akito dons his mechanic hat and under KK's instruction, fixes up Rinko's bike. With this bike, Akito and KK are able to tear through the deadly fog surrounding Tokyo Tower, shielded in a bubble of spirit energy. Before they can continue their journey, Yasutoko catches up to them and, after a brief chase, manages to knock Akito from his ride. Luckily, the pair are close to the safety of the tower, evading Yasutoko's wrath for the time being. Before reaching the tower entrance, they run into the waning spirit of Rinko. This is where I died. Full of regret. But thanks to you two, I can put that behind me now. You're taking off. I have to. Got nothing left keeping me here. She has completed her mission and the unfinished business binding her soul to the human realm. Erika has been set free and Rinko has helped KK to his final destination. With her mission complete, she bids the two farewell and crosses over to the other side. One final obstacle blocks our heroes from reaching their destination. This is Okina, the third of Hanya's Master Assassins, and a demon known as Sushigumo, which inhabits the body of his late wife. 
She takes on the form of a giant spider-like creature, and as Akito and KK do battle, they hear the cries of Hanya's wife, who died from a terminal illness, and as a result, sent him spiralling out of control. Please don't worry about a thing, Dad. Erika, you're out there. Is she running herself? Hanya wanted to bring the souls of his family into the human realm, freeing them of their bodies so they may exist in our reality forever. To him, the body is just a vessel, an unnecessary burden. But by performing the ritual that took the life of his daughter Erika, Hanya had destroyed the very thing he sought to protect, and truly lost his way. Akito takes down Akina, and KK then cleanses the body of Hanya's wife, laying it to rest. The two then enter the tower to begin their final mission, to save Mari and put an end to Hanya's apocalyptic plan. While climbing the tower, Akito hears the voice of his sister Mari, who begins to plant the seeds of doubt in his head. Akito! You never even think about me at all, do you? You only ever worry about yourself. You're just afraid I'll die because of you, aren't you? KK tells Akito that this is one of Hanya's tricks, and to keep it together. Composing himself, Akito continues on, and eventually they locate Hanya, who is about to begin the ritual with Mari, which will bridge the two realms together. He puts up a force field to prevent Akito from reaching his sister, and then summons KK's body Yasutoko to keep the pair away from following him into the spirit realm. However, Akito seems to have given up hope, dissuaded by the reality that his sister might not actually want his help. So you're scared, right? Of how she might feel. Finding out that maybe you did all this for nothing. You're afraid to hear the truth. How do you know? Nothing. I never even knew what my own family was thinking. That's why you need to go find out for yourself. KK. I'm not stopping now. Are you with me? I am. Let's go. I gotta ask her myself. Can't die yet. Following KK's motivational speech, the pair face off against Yasutoko, and during this battle we hear KK's own inner torment. How he felt powerless to stop the forces of darkness led by Hanya, a man living in despair. I got no one. No single person to back me up. I don't need them anyway. I'm just fine on my own. KK. But it's different now. I got you. Yeah, you do. By cleansing his body, KK literally defeats his demons, and is one step closer to completing his own unfinished business. The duo head into the mouth of one of the giants, and transition into the spirit realm, in hot pursuit of the man in the mask. Once inside the giant, Akito is forced to face his own fears, which manifest as memories he must walk through and re-experience. These memories tell us of his tragic family history, and explain in full the events which led us to Mari's hospitalisation. While Akito had always been there for his sister Mari, he often tried to escape her, and spent much of his time away with his friends. While the siblings were still very young, their father passed away, and a few years later, their mother followed. Akito tried to be there for his sister, but fell into deep depression. They bounced around from apartment to apartment as money ran low and despair set in. How many more new beginnings do we need to have? This isn't even a beginning. We're just falling further down. Sometimes I wish we could just hit the bottom. This led to one fateful day, when Mari was home alone and a fire broke out in their apartment. While she had time to get out, Mari went back for the wedding rings of her late parents, the last memento of them she still possessed. In doing so, she ended up trapped, 
passing out from the smoke and ending up in a coma due to lack of oxygen to her brain. Akito always blamed himself for not being there to save her. Now he is finally able to hear Mari's true inner thoughts and how she felt abandoned by her brother during such hardships. Akito manages to make it through these painful revelations and, along with KK, reaches Hanya who is beginning to perform his world-ending ritual. Hanya summons a ghost army to hold our heroes at bay while he uses Mari to bridge the gap between realms. But then, something unexpected occurs. Is this... Is she doing this? No! The ceremony cannot be stopped! <sighs> Mari uses the last of her strength to fight back against Hanya and defy him. She denies her body as a tool to merge the realms of man and ghost. But this show of strength has drained Mari and she now fades from this world, dying in her brother's arms, but not before giving him the closure he sought. Mari... Big brother... Live. I'm so glad... I could finally... Mari hands Akito the wedding rings once belonging to their parents, striking fresh purpose into his heart. As Hanya emerges from the underworld, with the very bodies of his family clinging to him like zombies, a final battle is waged. Akito and KK fighting the masked man one last time in a bid to save the world from his tyranny. We gain nothing from parties! None! Emerging victorious from this long battle, the man in the Hanya mask is finally defeated, and Akito returns to his sister to say his final goodbyes. At that moment he is transported to a forest shrouded in mist, where the spirits of his late parents approach him and collect up Mari's soul. They say goodbye to their son and guide his sister into the afterlife, reunited once again. Mari finally found peace and Akito is told to let go of his pain and lead a full life. He says goodbye and heads up the stairs of a nearby shrine, now back in the real world once more. Hanya's deadly fog has lifted and the visiting spirits are gone. Balance restored and his mission complete, KK asks one last favour. I gotta ask you for one last thing. Yeah? Talk to my wife and my boy. Tell them I never gave up. Not for a moment. I will. I promise. Hey, sorry to dump that on you. I'd do it myself if I could, but I'm, I'm getting a little tired. With his unfinished business now taken care of, KK is also now able to pass over to the other side. Akito feels the spirit of his unlikely new friend leave his body and says goodbye, heading off into the sunset to begin a new chapter in his life. And with that, we come to the end of this look at the story of Ghostwire Tokyo. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it both entertaining and informative. If you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.